in today's video is a skincare spotlight all about retinoids or vitamin A, which are just so great for so many different things, especially skincare. So I'm going to go over kind of what they are, what they do, side effects, the different types of them, and then product recommendations. So basically, vitamin A is a highly effective anti-aging skincare ingredient. Retinoids were first in, in, created in 1931 and first hit the market officially in 1943. So these have quite a long track record. Vitamin A is kind of a jack of all trades and almost anyone with anti-aging concerns can benefit from a good vitamin A product in their routine. There's many different types of vitamin A and some skin types might benefit from one over another. It just depends on your skincare needs. There are also some prescription only retinoids as well as many over the counter retinoids. Um, in addition to topical retinoids, there are oral retinoids such as things like Accutane, uh, which are typically only used in severe cases of acne and all retinols belong to the retinoid family. I know those words tend to get used often vice versa, but all retinoids are retinoid, all retinols are retinoid, but not all retinoids are retinols. Hopefully that explains it a bit. I'm going to keep going. Okay. So why would somebody want to use a retinoid in their routine? So retinoids are one of the best anti-aging ingredients. They've also been thoroughly studied and proven time and time again to help shrink pores, prevent and heal breakouts, assist with fading fine lines and wrinkles, firming and brightening skin, helping with uneven skin texture, and also helping prevent or lessen collagen loss over time. Retinoids are the jack of all trades. They do so much different things for skin. So if you have one skin concern and you start using it, you'll probably notice a lot of other good things happening to your skin. So how do retinoids work? So this is the one thing that drives me crazy because I see this even on a very popular beauty blog site where they described retinoid as an exfoliant. I don't know. It was a very pop. I'm not going to bash them, but... I see that time and time again that they describe it as an exfoliant, and retinoids are not an exfoliant. They work on a cellular level with skin. They make your skin cells behave in a more healthy and normal way. Uh, every skin cell contains receptors for retinoic acid, and tretinin, for example, binds directly to those receptors. And after it binds to those receptors, it then changes how each basic cell behaves. Most people think that retinoids function in a way that exfoliates or removes dead skin cells. This is not the case. Retinoids actually go deep into your skin layers to normalize how those cells behave. They don't stay on top. They soak deep down. Um, not all retinoids are built the same. Some are much weaker than others. Some retinoids are synthetic. Some are natural. However, basically every retinoid must break down into retinoic acid to be absorbed and worked by the skin. The weaker the retinoid is, the more times that it has to be broken down into retinoic acid. So all types of retinoids are converted to this state by your skin before it can be used. So that's why there's like a hierarchy, like um, things like tretinin, pretty high up. This doesn't require any because this is just retinoic acid, basically. So this doesn't require any conversions into your skin so it instantly gets soaked up whereas things like retinol are actually weaker and require more conversions but there are also things that are stronger than retinol which are becoming popular and I'll talk about that in a second. So there's a lot of side effects and there's a whole verb called retinization and um, so if you're new to retinoids, it is no small chore to start these. There are ways to make the process less painful because retinoids can make the skin look and feel dry, feel flaky, look flaky, redness, itchiness, peeling. Uh, your skin just feel irritated generally and sometimes people experience occasional purging with beginning it. So you can certainly ease that process and the side effects in many ways. Starting out slowly is the biggest key. Do not start using something like tretinin every single night when you're new to retinoids. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You're going to be so mad at yourself if you do. Start out very slow. Use it one night, then skip three or four, then another night, then skip three or four. Um, 
and slowly build your way up. Um, another way is to pick a retinol or retinoid that is fragrance free and alcohol free because it just lessens the chance that your skin's gonna be irritated by something else in the formula. Um, also following retinoids with a good thick moisturizer will also help um, prevent the dryness and flakiness. And then starting with a lower strength retinoid and working your way up to something stronger is also a great way to start out. Things like Sunday Riley Luna has a very, very weak retinoid in here. Start out with something like that. Or the Versed is also, this one does contain retinol, but it's a lower percentage and it's got a great formula with other soothing ingredients. So you can start with something like this and slowly build your way up over time. Um, so there's timelines for effectiveness depending on what you want to treat. And I'll copy all this and then there's links too but so if acne is your main issue three to four months typically of continual use will help alleviate that hyperpigmentation about three to five months deep or indented scars six months and up anti-aging and photo aging fine lines three to six months uh, if oil and sebum production is a huge issue that usually helps within two weeks can kind of lessen the oil production and then things like pore size, six months and up. And the longer you use it, the better your skin will start to look. So retinoid options and types. There's so many different ones. We've got synthetic or natural, prescription or over-the-counter, oral versus topical application. There's also different generations of retinoids. We've got the first generation all the way up to now, a fourth generation of retinoids. A fourth generation retinoid called Triforatine was just approved for use in the U.S. just last year. I don't know much else about that one. But now I'm going to talk about different uh, types of them in order of how weak they are and end with the strongest one. So retinol uh, renoate, which is a retinoid molecule that is formed by attaching retinol with retinoic acid. Because this converts slower, it's found to be a bit more gentle. Uh, research shows promise, especially in things like preventing acne. But in my opinion, there's more research that needs to be done before I'd recommend that over any other retinoid. There's also retinol palmitate, which is another weaker version over the counter. It's a combination of retinol and palmitic acid. It's become increasingly popular lately due to its purported anti-aging effects without the traditional side effects of retinol, such as dryness and flakiness. Um, if it's used with other retinoids, it can have some effect on the skin, but just not compared to other stronger retinoids, retinol. Then we've got hydroxypinacolone retinoate, also in Sunday Riley Luna, which is also known as Gran Active Retinoid. Uh, the Ordinary, this one's great. It's also called retinoic acid ester, meaning it's directly related to retinoic acid. Because it is a retinoic acid ester, it binds directly to retinoid receptors of the skin cells, so it doesn't require that conversion as much. It's shown little irritation. Although my personal experience using it, it doesn't help with anti-aging nearly as much as any other retinoids I've used. Then we get to retinol. Everyone probably knows retinol. It's probably the most common retinoid out there. It's the gold standard of anti-aging. It's over-the-counter. And because it's over-the-counter, it's available in so many different strengths and formulas. The Paula's Choice has great retinol products. I highly recommend them. Uh, retinol requires two conversions in the skin before the retinoic acid is absorbed by the skin. Because of that, it's less potent than other retinoids. Uh, but it's very well studied. It's a tried and true ingredient for anti-aging. Um, and it's in so many different strengths and formulas. The CeraVe, they have a great one. Versed is a great one. Clinique just came out with a new one, which I'm really enjoying. Paula's Choice, the Retinol Booster is great. The Clinical 1% Retinol Treatment is amazing. I'll add a list at the end of this of the ones I recommend. The Drunk Elephant is great as well. So those are some amazing retinols. The nice thing is, I always get asked, what's the strongest retinol out there? The nice thing is, there is a strongest retinol that's available over the counter, and it's actually not even called retinol, it's called retinal. Which, up until like the last couple of years, I really didn't see it in a lot of products. Uh, however, now I'm seeing it show up a lot more 
And this is great for many people because it's stronger than retinol, but you don't need a prescription for it. Retinol, also known as retinol hide. It's slightly more potent than retinol. Um, and it's kind of been a retinoid that hasn't been talked about much up until recently. So now there's a lot of products out there. Uh, before, really, Avene with their retinol was the only one that was out there. But now we've got uh, Allies of Skin has a retinol mask. Uh, the Medicaid brand, their Crystal Retinol, they've got several different strengths. Uh, Geek and Gorgeous, their A-Game Retinol also has a couple different strengths in it. Um, so it's a little bit more potent. So if you've used retinols in the past and want to kick it up a bit, retinol might be the good way to go. Uh, it's less side effects than the stronger prescription ones, but can really bump up the anti-aging effects. Uh, retinol is the intermediate step between retinoic acid and retinol, meaning it needs only one conversion step to become active in the skin. And because of this one less step, the effects are stronger than retinol. And the nice thing is there's more and more retinol products on the market than there ever has been, which is great. Some of them are a little bit more pricey than others. So do some shopping around. The Medicaid line has some amazing ingredients as well. The next step up from that, and in the U.S. now it is over the counter, and that is Adapalene, also known as Differin, and now La Roche-Posay, CVS, Walgreens, Proactive, they all have their own Adapalene product. It's the exact same formula in all of them. I've used them all. They are the exact same. The only difference is the packaging and the prices. I've read where people say, well, I've tried them, but the, the most expensive one just seemed to work a little bit better. The different brands seem to work a little bit better. They're the same. They're made in the same lab, just packaged and sold at different prices. So Adapalene, third generation synthetic retina used for mild cases of acne as well as uh, keratosis polaris, which is like bumpy skin. Um, third generation synthetic, it's a good frontline retinoid for before you try something stronger like tretinin. Uh, the nice thing about adapalene is it can also be used with benzoyl peroxide and also clindamycin for further acne relief. Adapalene uh, can be used to lessen the side effects also of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Adapalene is typically well tolerated especially compared to something stronger such as tretinin which is uh it is prescription only, tretinin, also known as retin-A or retinoic acid or all trans retinoic acid. So tretinin is a naturally occurring vitamin that's also the gold standard of anti-aging. Because this one does not need any additional steps to be converted into skin, it goes directly into those receptors. It's very strong, so be very careful starting them. I highly recommend you work your way up to this one. It is very strong. Um, the nice thing is there's also slower release formulas such as Retin-A Micro. Uh, it's all prescription only. And then we've got isotretinin. It's a synthetic form of tretinin, typically used only in the most severe cases of acne. It's also used to prevent certain skin cancers and treatment of other cancers, which is very interesting. Um, it's also available orally through Accutane, but be very careful with that. Um, very very careful so it's nothing to mess around with then we've got uh tazeraterine which is synthetic retinoid used to treat acne psoriasis and photo damage sold only in two concentration tends to be very expensive only available through prescription i've never tried that either and then i will uh, link my list of product recommendations and then also some helpful links that have more information on each of those ingredients and anything else you might want to know. So um, anyway, so those are my thoughts on vitamin A retinoids. Um, I'm interested in hearing from you guys what your experience has been or if you have a favorite retinol retinoid product out there, what it is and why you love it. Uh, so definitely leave a comment. I love hearing from you guys and stay tuned for more tomorrow. Thank you so much.